Hey guys, welcome back to Recordology. As of the filming of this on location in Houston, Texas, visiting family. So while we're here, we need to check out some vinyl. And today we're gonna go to a shop that's up on the north side of Houston, but I think it's worth the drive. It looks like it is. It is called Volume Music and it looks really cool. So let's go check it out. Welcome to Recordology. And a very special treat for you guys, Mrs. Recordology is joining me here on this voiceover. Hi, you guys. It is so great to be back with you. And really good to be back in a cool vinyl shop. Walking in, we were just blown away by the variety right off the bat. Didn't you think they had an amazing variety? It was amazing because there was so many different genres being represented here mm -hmm. and um, just an eclectic collection of yeah. really cool stuff to look at. Yeah, and not the biggest shop I've ever seen, but at the same time, one that had items that I had never seen before. And speaking with the owner, she mentioned that they really try hard to get a little bit of everything for everybody. Yes, Tiffany mentioned that that was one of her um, key ideas and key focuses was to try and make a store that was for everyone. Yeah. And she certainly has done a great job with it and it's so organized mm -hmm. and it's just fantastic. Absolutely. From a pricing standpoint, I noticed that they do a lot of average pricing where they will for certain products will just sort of be priced at a certain price point. And so for some items, it's a really good deal. For other items, it's not as good of a deal. But on average, you know what you're going to spend. Like, for instance, all the CDs I came across were $4.25 for the used ones, which in some cases was a really good deal. And that was awesome. But again, just the variety in a small shop to have so much in there. Right. And the thing that I really loved was that they also had some really great merchandise items as far as like coffee cups, yeah. um, socks, yeah. um, just some really interesting things. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when I was digging down here, uh, I was blown away because of what I'm about to show you here. I actually found Glenn Miller's Limited Edition Volume 2. That's a very rare set. That's a very rare set. If I didn't have two copies of this already, I would have snagged it. You never find this in a record shop. So the fact that they were able to hone in on this is something that they wanted in their shop and to make it available for people was very, very impressive. And if you are in the Houston area and you want to snag a copy of that, I would recommend doing so. Also, got to check out the children's records. I find some super, super cool stuff in the kids' bins. And you like looking at the kids' bins as well, don't you? Yes, I really do. And they even had a copy of Alice in Wonderland here. I oh, did they? I just saw it. But okay, yeah, cool. I just think it's great. That's awesome. I Now, I'm about to come across a copy of... Uh, Batman and I'm kind of having reverse buyer's remorse on this one it was 15 bucks and it looked really really cool I wanted to make sure it was like I the reason why I passed over it is I wasn't sure even by looking at it for a minute if it was the original recordings or if it was sort of you know like redone kind of a 70s sure. re redone type of thing yeah. but I kind of regret not getting that that one was very very cool and I wanted to spend some time here just kind of flipping through some records so you guys could get a a taste for what they had and again my taste may be different than yours so if jose feliciano isn't necessarily your uh, your thing you'll have to bear with me here for a second by the way a very underrated guitar player uh not just a singer of a uh, popular christmas song a lot of cds too they had uh, n new cds and i was amazed by that a lot of new sealed compact discs available and she even said they had some new cassettes available, yes. which I thought was amazing. Yeah, here are the Here's socks. Here's the socks. These are so great. <laughs> Funny socks. You'll have to see. We got a couple of pairs. Our son collects sort of, you know, odd socks. So we did get him some of those. He wasn't able to come with this on this trip. Now, I spy with my little eye in the background there something very, very interesting. We'll come to in a minute. Had to check out the Patsy Cline CD collection. It was massive. But look at this, Record Store Day 3-inch record players. And not only that, you'll see in a minute, we found some 3-inch records. A lot of hardware, a lot of equipment that you can buy. I didn't know that these RSD3 players were available anywhere. At one time, they were made available to record stores such as this. And then I found this GPX boombox. This is one I've wanted to review 
uh, the, the GPQ, is it GPQ? I thought it was GPX, but anyway, that brand. And then look at this. We've got the sold out, no longer available Crosley Beatles yellow submarine portfolio and the anthology let it be edition. I never got my hands on. Yes, they had some very hard to find items there mm -hmm. and some things that were unique and things that we hadn't seen in other stores before. Yeah, and the cassettes weren't just like junk cassettes. There was some great material and it was all alphabetized, which was awesome. Yes, the entire store is alphabetized, which was really, really nice, especially when you're doing like cassettes and CDs yeah. because usually those are the things that just kind of get piled right. up somewhere. Mm -hmm. exactly. And it wasn't that way in the store. It was super organized. Nice. It was. The whole store was very organized. You could go in there and if you knew what you were looking for, you could find it or find that they didn't have it. But in, the, in, in our experience, they had it. They had everything. And even this 99 cent bin <laughs> had good stuff in it. Now, at this point, it's not alphabetized. It's just a pile. But, uh, you know, it's literally, you know, good stuff. Sealed copies of things. I think I got a one or two tapes out of here. And by the way, stay tuned to the end of the video for the haul show you exactly what we came away with but yeah there's some just fun fun stuff in here they had eight tracks they had you know every format you can imagine and even a three inch record section which i was just blown away with very cool stuff so what would you have picked up what would you have grabbed that you can see here what would you be on the lookout for this tape was kind of dirty Sometimes that happens. You wonder, how did it get to this point? You know, what on earth <laughs> led it to be looking like this at this point? So really cool. They do a good job of going out there and getting a lot of product on their website. One of the things that it said was that they um, are taking steps specifically to, you know, increase their inventory to go out there and get more and more stuff. They're adding to it continuously to the point where they said that they're about to expand. So, you know, they're kind of in this strip mall area, which is really convenient. You just park right out front, go right in. And it's a, you know, unassuming little place, but it's going to be growing, which is really cool. Yes, I think she said even future plans may include a live performance stage. Yes, she did. Which yeah. would be fantastic. Wouldn't that be cool to you know hear a band in person and shop for vinyl and maybe even get an autograph while you're at it? Here's some of the accessories. They had a lot mm -hmm. of cool stuff. As you can see, they've got platter mats. They've got cleaning kits. And they even have, check this out. I think it's coming up here in a second. They had a uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club cake mold, which is stuff I never even knew existed. Maybe we already showed it. Oh, wait, no, here it is in red in the box there. A Sergeant Pepper Lonely Hearts Club cake mold. And I think those are ice cube trays, yellow submarine ice cubes. Stuff like that. It's just fun. You know what I mean? It's just the little things that go along with it. Here is their eight track section. And I uh, didn't find any 8-tracks today I was looking for, but it was cool that they had it. I always appreciate it when they have 8-tracks. Definitely. And they seem to have ones that were fairly popular ones. Yeah, um, that exactly. You... Yeah, they were, t they were titles that people would want. They weren't just super obscure stuff. Right, exactly. And they had new vinyl, used vinyl, new CDs, used CDs. And like she said, new tapes and use tapes as well. People were coming in. It was a very friendly environment. People, it was like a first name basis. The owner had, you know, really worked to talk to people that come in and establish that personal touch, that close relationship with their customers. And that was really, really cool. Because a lot of times when you walk into a vinyl shop, you sort of feel like you're just, you know, a number. You know what I mean? Like just another customer. But here it was like, they really appreciated you. They made eye contact. They greeted you. You could tell that she really has put a lot of heart and soul yes. into this store. And it's just so neat to see someone really personally invested mm -hmm. in something that they truly care about. So what did I come away with? Let's start with the cassettes here. Some Chopin. I love the Nocturnes. And I'm really excited just to use this as some music to work by, some music to have on in the background. Laser Light is a value label from uh, back in the day, but it's a label that actually produced good stuff. I am happy to say that at least at one point, maybe still to this day, the only gold record ever issued on the Laser Light digital label was the Glenn Miller uh, Christmas albums in the Christmas mood or in the Christmas mood too. Speaking of Christmas, I also picked up the legit version of Merry Christmas. 
you guys might remember that I have a knockoff of this and maybe we'll do a comparison one of these days between the two, but this is the legitimate version of this album. So that's really cool. Another tape. Patsy Klein's story. This is the fourth album, which is part greatest hits, part original. This was the first album issued after her passing, and I did not have it on cassette, so I was excited to find it on cassette. And not only that, it's on a clear shell, uh, which I think is good. Moving on to CDs, they had a huge Patsy Klein section, so I had to load up on some. This is a CD of some early music. I've been on the lookout for some more Peggy Lee. This album comes up quite a bit and I've been wanting to snag a copy and I saw it and I did. You'll notice that both of these CDs are 425. I think all the CDs I got are 425, which in some cases is overpriced and in some cases it's underpriced. It looks like they did an average price. And for the most part, I think it's still a good deal. For those two, I think it's fair, especially for the Peggy Lee. Um, here's another one I picked up. This is, I think this is Pear Records. Is this Pear Records? No, this isn't. I picked up was Country Great. This happens to be the CD version of Patsy Cline's self-titled debut album from 1957 with new artwork. And this is the CD version. And as soon as you flip it over, you can see this branding is uh, it matches up with all of that late 80s DECA MCA stuff that they released. So I was very happy to find that. And I did pick up a record as well, and it is a DECA release. I did not have the list of which singles I own already, so I took a shot in the dark on this. These were priced a little bit high. $7.99 is a bit high, at least in the Denver area. For 45s but at the same time it was you know just super fun to find this stuff to find patsy klein music in the wild is always fun so those are my finds tell me which ones you would have picked up forgot to mention we did pick up this miniature now spinning sign you remember that big one we reviewed recently this is the miniature one for three inch records and speaking of three inch records here is the nora jones christmas don't be late record on three inch vinyl these are my wife she picked this up and I think that's really, really cool. And for our son, we got him a couple of pairs of socks, which I think uh, fit well. I like it. What do you guys think? Okay, so as you could tell by the video itself, I really like this place. I really, really did. It was unique because it wasn't all gore and metal, intense volumes while you're trying to shop. I know a lot of people like that. For me, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm I don't like the intensity of some of the vinyl shops as much as others do. That being said, this shop had a lot of variety. And sure enough, as you can see from this video, there was a lot of eclectic stuff that I really enjoyed. I mean, I found a huge Patsy Cline CD collection, bigger than any other store I've ever seen. And that goes for the mammoth huge stores that we've reviewed in the past. This one had an amazing, amazing assortment of various varieties of music, including children's music, show tunes, vintage stuff. I found a Glenn Miller set that I probably will include in the edit of this video that that's a rare thing to find. That is not something that you just find laying around. So the fact that they knew that when they acquired it and they brought it into their store, I think speaks volumes. It's a very family friendly place. It was a blast shopping there. They did an amazing job of alphabetizing their titles. Even the cassettes, the eight tracks, Definitely the CDs and all the vinyl were all alphabetized. So it was really easy to find what you were looking for. I'll put their info down below. Also, I wanna say thank you to Tiffany for being so gracious and welcoming and letting us film in the store. Hopefully we weren't too disruptive. We had a blast. So check them out. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.